people's house. And so you can't not, like, hello, sorry. Uh, I don't even know if, it, like, ringing them up and saying, sorry, I'm a bit unwell this morning, won't be turning up. <laughs> you cannot do that. It's like they've flown you all that way to bring a revival into the midst of the house. You better turn up, like rock up. So you've got to stand up, you've got to shake yourself, get the hottest shower you ever, ever had in your life and get yourself sort of bubbled and then just say, come on, we're going to go. And in fact, I remember going into that. I remember I got up, finally got up on stage, <laughs> never ever to be forgotten this day. And I remember you've got, to, you've got to at least, you know, faith is actually walking in it before you feel it, right? Most of you would agree. So I thought you've got to at least act confident. So I went marching forward. And in Jesus' name, come on, everybody, lift your hand. And I stepped clean over the front of the stage, which here it's easy because about three inches. But in that church, it just happened to be an eight-foot stage. And, uh, and I'll never forget, eh? I just sort of, ah, come on, lift your hand, boom. And down I went. And, of course, the place just went, you could have heard a pin drop. And at that stage, sorry, camera, sorry, online audience, Nico, you do such an amazing job. I don't know how you can even... I'm going to test you now and just see how good you are. Um, but he's following. And anyway, the place you could have heard a pin drop. And uh, so everybody's on. Oh, no, he's gone. And to be honest with you, when I was down the bottom there, I'm like, I'm gone. <laughs> like everything in my body was agony. And I thought, nah, you can't. And I just launched to my feet. I didn't have the energy to jump onto the stage because it was eight feet, but I charged around and ran up the stairs and I said, there's a great jumping start to the day. Come on, guys, let's get on our feet and rejoice in God and carried on as if nothing had happened. Now, here's the reality. God wants us to carry on as if nothing's gone wrong because he's got it all in control. He's got it. If you, if you don't understand that, you need to get a grip on the word of God and understand God's got it all in control. Read the book. And, and, and obviously, we've got to get to this, but grace, 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 grace. It's all about the grace of God. That's what I'm trying to say. Communion is all about the grace of God, guys. And uh, if you want to read a great uh, report on that, there's a story about the Zerubbabel speaking to the mountain. And there's a mountain in between, and it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the minor prophets in the, in the Old Testament. And he talks about how there's a huge mountain standing between Christ and us. And then we're trying to speak to the mountain, and we're trying to speak to the mountain and get the mountain out of the way. But Jesus is on the other side of the mountain, and he just starts saying, grace, 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 and the mountain dissolves and disappears. I want to tell you the grace of God is bigger than any mountain you're facing right now, bigger than any circumstance you're facing, and all you've got to do is hold on to the love of Jesus Christ. That's why we're taking communion this morning. In fact, I'm just going to take you right now. I just want to do this just for the fun of it, and uh, I want to go to the very end of the Bible. This is my Bible, by the way, to the very end of the Bible. In case any of you are here today, and you don't know about this. What, what the heck are you excited about, Don? I'm excited about the walk of God. I'm excited about the destiny and the plans of God in our lives. I'm excited about the, the, the health and the fitness I've got in my body. I'm excited that I'm not parallel. I'm excited that Jesus has saved me. I'm excited that, that when I was 25 years old, he washed my sins away and totally set me free from sin, and I've been living this life of radical powerful praise ever since and uh, I thank God for the amazing people that God's put around me the people that have enabled me to stay strong even when the days when I'm feeling weak people have come alongside and said come on you can do it come on you can do it and cause you to get up again and run again even when you don't feel like you can sometimes so I'm very grateful for the incredible people that are in this house today and around us okay but listen to this the very last verse in the Bible just that, you know, it doesn't get through all of this, all of this, 66 books of the Bible, and he doesn't say, nah, just kidding, you're on your own. <laughs> That's not the God of faithfulness. That's not the God who sticks with you. That's not the God who is a covenant-keeping God. And he says this. He says, and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all forever. Amen. Right at the end, it's still grace. So just in case you're thinking today, wonder where we're at, man, I don't know how we're going to get through here. The only way you'll get through it is with the grace of God.
The only way we'll make it through is with the grace of God, friends. He is faithful, and He won't let you down. It's called covenant. It's called covenant, okay? Christianity is basically an Eastern religion, okay? You need to understand these things to get your head around it. And one of the best ways I've ever had of understanding that is the Western movies. I don't know if you watch those. Yeah, Westerns are probably some of the most powerful movies. And uh, my dad used to make me watch them, okay? And um, they, they were some of the, the, the fairly, uh, I mean, black and white uh, old movies. And um, there used to be some of the incredible scenes that were depicted of Covenant. And blood covenant, people cutting their hands and mingling their blood together. I mean, imagine if you still had to do that to get a covenant happening. You know? Like, that's what they say about the guys who fought in the trenches. See, when they fought in the trenches, they said, when you got a little bit of each other's blood on you, you became comrades forever and you would fight through any circumstance together. Sometimes today, I think we're a little distant of the understanding of covenant. Christianity is essentially an Eastern religion that is based on covenant. When Abraham walked out of Mesopotamia, God said, I'm going to give you. Here's what he said. There's a promise I'm going to make to you that you and your family will inherit the promised world that I'm going to give you. Your family will be kept. Your homes will be kept. Your, your heart will be kept. And I will make an everlasting promise to you that I will never leave you and never forsake you. That was what God said to Abraham when he stepped out. He's called the father father of faith and so we here today walk in that same promise how do we know that because God came down and as we just read before God came down and cut covenant with him in the middle of the desert in a place called I think it was in a place called Haran where God met with them there in Haran and he said because Abraham said God are you really going to be with me are you really going to walk through this I haven't even got a child yet and you said I'd have thousands of children and he said, I haven't even got one. God, are you really there? And he was 100 years old, 99 years old, I think. And he said, God, are you still a covenant keeper? And God said, I'll still keep covenant with you. So whatever you're faced with today, see, we can lose hope. I'll tell you, we're humans, we lose hope. That's why we have church every Sunday. That's why it's good to be in church every Sunday. Incidentally, talking about being in church every Sunday, I was online in Wellington the other day, diverting a little bit here. We're trying to get communion happening, all right? And... Uh, <laughs> And uh, I, was, I was in Wellington preaching last Sunday, and uh, I, I, I looked at the camera. God bless all you people that are watching online today because you are a st strategically a key of part of what God's doing. And I said, here's a prophetic word. This could be for you today. And I said, prophetic word, you're broken right now. You're down in the dumps right now. You feel like life has nothing to offer you. Well, today I want to present to you a Christ who can bring hope to your life, who can deliver you, save you, and set you free. And right now he's knocking on your heart. I wonder if we're ready to respond to that. Anyway, we went through the service after that, and I was almost at the end. In fact, I was almost about to give my altar call, and a woman, next thing, a woman comes charging in the back door of church, just be just like it could happen here, came raining in, tears streaming down her face, and uh, ran down the altar, wanting to know, where do I go, where do I go, yelling out, and came right to the altar, gave a life to Christ on the altar, fell on her knees, and just, and, and just had a miracle, got set free of some horrible stuff that was happening in her life, and she'd been watching on online and the Holy Spirit spoke to her and was a divine appointment for that day and she got radically transformed on the altar and I want to tell you that's the God we serve no matter where you're at that's the God we serve who is faithful in your circumstance faithful right where you are you don't even have to you don't have to position yourself he positioned himself on a cross so you could have everlasting life and hope that's why when I used to watch his movies, there was a guy in there called Gary Cooper. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Gary. Kevin, you might be the only. There's a couple of you there that know Gary Cooper. Okay? Study him. One of the most famous cowboys ever born in history. Okay? Gary Cooper. And Gary Cooper would come riding in. Okay? You've got to see the picture. Some of you that have got an imagination like me, you'll be able to see this, okay? So Gary Cooper would come riding in, and he's riding through the desert, and next thing he comes across an Indian brave, and he's caught in a bear trap, and the bear trap has clamped his leg, and it's busted his leg, and Gary Cooper gets down and begins to nurse the guy back to health and ungrips the bear trap and, and helps him and oils him, a bit like the, the, the Good Samaritan, and he puts him all back together, and the, the Indian, and he stays there for days, and he's looking after this guy, and then all, there comes the day where the guy's back together and he gets up 
and you see the Indian brave go to the saddle of Cooper's horse and he pulls out this huge knife. Cooper's over tending to the fire and you're thinking, because imagination like me, this is it. He's an Indian, he's an Indian brave. And uh, he comes walking toward Cooper and you're like, no. And then he pulls the knife up and you're thinking, oh no, after all he's done for you. And then he puts his own hand up and then he slashes his hand open. He reaches over and he grabs Cooper's hand and he slashes his hand and he mingles them together and they become blood brothers. One of the greatest truths of covenant, they become blood brothers right there and then. And so... The next thing, the Indian braves all back together. He rides off back to meet his tribe. Cooper rides off into the desert. And uh, weeks later, Cooper gets caught up. Oh, yeah, that's right. There was a little bit of stuff that happens on the movie where they exchange. And there's always an exchange, isn't there? There's always an exchange. Whenever covenant's made, Jesus made a covenant with us, and there was an exchange at the cross. It wasn't just the blood of Jesus that washes away from sin. Then he said, I'm going to give you something that will seal this covenant. It's called the Holy Spirit. And he put the Holy Spirit, and he gave it and waited in the upper room. And boom, last weekend, two weeks ago, sorry, we celebrated Pentecost here when the power of the Holy Spirit came. And we became filled with the power from within that can keep us through the darkest valley and through the darkest night. And God seals his covenant every time. And same with Cooper. And when the Indian cut his hand, then he took off a trinket that was around his neck and he hung it around Cooper's neck. And uh, vice versa, Cooper, ga Cooper gave him some stuff. And they rode off. And next thing, he's caught by the Indian braves. And the, they drag Cooper by the hair into the Indian camp. They're about, they're lifting his hair about to scalp him. And guess who would ride in? The Indian brave comes riding in just at the right time. And he's yelling out, hold it, hold it, hold it. And... Uh, they all look down at Cooper and then the Indian brave jumps off his horse and he goes and he rips open the shirt of Cooper and right there is the trinket, the little emblem of the seal of the covenant that they've made hanging on Cooper's chest and every, all the Indians look at this brave and then the brave holds up his hand and there's this cut mark in his hand. He holds up Cooper's hand and I want to tell you right now, Nothing happened to Cooper. Why? Because there's been a covenant that's been made. And it's the same with us, friend. When the devil comes and attacks you, when he rips you to pieces and puts you down, then right there, Holy Spirit just says, look at this. I am inside of this man. My power has sealed the covenant that Christ has made with you for eternity. And we can live in victory. Why? Not because we're any good. Not because we are great overcomers, but because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And it's called the power of the Holy Spirit. And listen, I haven't even got to my notes yet this morning, but we're going to take communion on that note. All right, we better take it. Now, if you can get the top off these things without messing up, good on you too. <laughs> Thank you, Julia. Oh, she's already eaten her. Bit of bread. Hopefully you've had time to, you have had time to prepare a little bit of communion at home. Maybe nicer than this. <laughs> Jesus' body was broken for us that we could be totally healed. And that's why we're going to pray for sick people in a moment, okay? His body was broken so that we could have wholeness in our lives, okay? Now, don't underestimate the power of the broken body of Christ that says he was beaten, whipped, scourged, so that our bodies could be totally made whole. Right. That's why it is in the Don McDonnell version. He suffered so we could be totally whole. So as we take this bread this morning, I want you to think right now of the greatness of the sacrifice, the covenant God made with you and me, that we could live in wholeness today in Jesus' name. Why don't we take this bread? And then on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the cup and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant. Man, I want to tell you, God doesn't give up on us because we Israel busted every single covenant promise that you could imagine. They busted every one of them, friend. And then God turns up and he says, but I'm still going to hold true to my side of the bargain. I'm going to send my son now. And because if you broke covenant, 
That was the idea of walking through the middle of those animals. They walked through the middle of the valley of death, they call it, where broken guts and blood are all over the place. And when they walked through there, that was the whole idea of making covenant, that if you didn't hold true to it, that would be your demise. That's where you'd end up. Jesus said, you've busted covenant, but you're not going to do that. I'm going to do it for you. And his body was busted, his blood was poured out so that you and I could have the victory today in Jesus' name. Let's thank God for this incredible, incredible covenant that he made with us today. Let's drink. Now, come on, give him a praise like you haven't given him for a while because that's a covenant-keeping God who came to set us free and came to give us all the victory in Jesus' name. Now, right there in that place, I want to get Annette to stand. I want anybody else to stand right now. If you're going through situations, if you're going through a battle right now, I want to believe that this is not, we're not just taking communion today. I'm believing for miracles in Jesus' name, okay? I'm believing for supernatural breakthrough. I know that God is a God of breakthrough, and we are not, we are not weak. You know, I, I just believe we've got to rise up with a whole, uh, in that whole warfare, spiritual warfare, man, uh, the demonic, let me tell you, demonic attack has never been stronger than it is right now. And there's a whole lot of people that are under demonic attack, and I want to stand strong. That's why I'm saying that we battle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, okay? And God said this is a new level, and we're going to pull down strongholds. We're going to pull down spiritual strongholds that have stood against people. And in Jesus' name, we're going to see victory happening in Jesus' name, okay? So while you're standing with me today, even as Dylan's standing there and that whole thing we believed for and prayed for, cancer goes in Jesus' name. We're going to. So I'm going to get some people that maybe... I don't know how this is going to work. It's a very small, cramped space, I realize. But if you can get a hand on someone, like if you're not standing, lay hands on that person, begin to pray for them right now. If you are standing and you still feel to pray and encourage a person alongside, you do that anyway, okay? But I want to pray for some people here, and we want to believe for miracles, and we want to stand in the gap for people right now. Here's some things I believe right now, okay? As we stand, there's been a demonic attack on people's lives, okay? The enemy that says the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, okay? So he He's come to kill, he's come to steal, and he's come to destroy. But God said, I have given you power over all the forces of the enemy. And in Jesus' name, we take hold of that today. So I take authority over every demonic attack against your life. And in Jesus' name, we cause you, Satan, to bow in the name of Jesus. We realize that we do have an enemy, and that's why we are in a fight. And so in this fight today, we stand strong in the name of Jesus Christ. And, Lord, I lift up people before you right now, and I pray in Jesus' name that miracles would happen. I cancel the effect of the enemy on your life today. As someone's laying hands on you today, you'll feel the warm flow of the Holy Spirit going right through you even right now. I sense that somebody right now is just sensing like a warm like a warm fire penetrating that part of your body that's under attack right now. And I believe to say here right now that God is setting you free and that God is giving you the victory and that in Jesus' name, as we have lifted up the cross of Christ today, as we believe that the Lord said, I will prepare a table before you in the midst of your enemies. So whatever that enemy is, if it's depression, if it's something that's come psychologically against you today, we, we bind you in Jesus' name. We command you to get off that person and let them go in Jesus' mighty name. Right now, we declare over this house that this is the house of God in Jesus' name, that we are blood-brought saints of the living God, that we will rise up and live in victory, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper in Jesus' mighty name, and that today we walk by faith, believing that if God be for us, who can be against us in Jesus' name? Hallelujah, Lord, we believe right now for miracles to oh, explode across this place in Jesus' name. Explode across this place in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. So I speak healing over your bodies right now. Speak healing right now. I speak healing in Jesus' name. As somebody's laid hands on you this morning, right now the presence of God is all around you. We speak healing over your body. 
We pray for Annette, even as Derek is in hospital right now. We pray for Stephen, even as Julie is in hospital right now. We pray for those two people, Lord, as we stand together as a family today. We believe that right now, Lord God, that miracles happen in those hospital beds. Lord God, that they come out of those beds in Jesus' name. If you're watching online today and you're suffering right now, we declare as my hand stretches toward you, I declare a miracle over your body, over your circumstances, over your mind in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, for the power and the supernatural love of God that heals us of all our diseases and all our infirmity in Jesus' name. I prophesy that to you today. In the name of Jesus, everybody shouted. Amen. 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 Yeehaw. Well, take a seat. We got through communion. But that was a good communion, man. I just feel fired up about it. I think the day started right and it'll end right. That's a good report, the good report that we started with today of Dylan's miracle. Uh, there's good reports all over the place, and I believe today that you walk out of here with a good report bubbling in your spirit in Jesus' name. I believe right there as I was praying, I believe people that are struggling with situations in their mind, I believe there are, there are even generational curses that we were dealing with this morning. I, I felt it was very powerful as we took communion this morning. I felt God say to me, I don't want you just to cruise through this. I'm going to do some miracles in the midst, okay? So I believe there are people right now that are dealing with generational curses. That's why it says generations, a thousand generations. So if there's generational curses that are, that are hindering you and restricting you today, this is church, guys, okay? This is church. This is where miracles happen. This is where the foundational truth of God is birthed in our hearts, and we walk out of here with such faith we can believe that all things are possible in Jesus' name. And I believe that. I've seen stuff. I've seen Nico right there behind the camera. I've seen this man. I saw from where he came and when he got born again. And you look at this man today. I know he's smiling right now because I'm taking it out of him. But, but this man walks around now with a smile that he never used to have because Jesus set him free. And there were some generational curses. There was stuff in the past. And you and I need to know how to step into that. And we need to know how to be the masters of it in Jesus' name, okay? That's why it's from faith to spiritual where there's new levels. Wherever there's new levels, there'll be new devils. You better believe it. Uh, uh, David went to a new level and there was Goliath. Take him out in Jesus' name. Let's get on with what God's got for us. Hallelujah. And as a church, let's get on with what? Don Ramdari, get ready for what God's got for you in this next season. I really felt I was praying for you yesterday, actually. God said, tell Don, get ready to go to another level and it won't be the same as the last level. You're going to take out some devils on this level. God's going to give you a spiritual authority that's going to uh, destroy those things in Jesus' name name okay okay thought you might be excited amen before we close today I want to pray for people okay so Lord I pray right now in Jesus name if there's anybody here who doesn't understand about the power of the covenant that you made Lord on Calvary where you died for us that we could have everlasting life Lord, I pray right now in this place, God, enjoy. this place is just such an awesome place too. Just the presence of God all over this place. God, I pray right now that those who don't know you and don't know your love, that today would be a great opportunity for them to say yes to Jesus today. Yes to Jesus today. And friend, wherever you're at right now, even if you're on TV and you're watching this on your iPhone, whatever, you're streaming in here today and you don't know Jesus as your saviour, friend, the greatest thing that ever happened was the day I said yes to Jesus. I simply put my hand on my heart and I said, Jesus, I invite you into my heart. If that's you today and you're on TV or you're on in this service, why don't you lift your hand right now and just say, that's me. I need to get my life right with God. If that's you, quickly, quickly, I'll just give you an opportunity right across here. Lift your hand, give me a wave and say, Don, I need to get my life right with God. Is that anybody here? If you're watching online, if that's you, Right now, put your hand on your heart. If you're in the service, I'm going to get you just to lift your hand right now and say, please include me in that prayer. In Jesus' name. For those that have responded, let's pray this prayer and say, Jesus, I thank you for your incredible love. I thank you that you gave your life for me, that I would have everlasting life. Thank you that you made a covenant. That gives me eternal hope. I declare you as my Savior today, my Lord, and my Deliverer. In Jesus' name, today I am set free by the power of God's love. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to add to that today that tonight, 
it's going to be exciting, okay? And I'm going to invite you, come and get into some, just some worship and some prayer. We're going to bust through some things tonight. I believe there are people that need to bust through, all right? To, I, I meet too many people, honestly, who are troubled in their minds. And, and it's, like a, it's, like a, it's like an enemy has tried to rob you of the joy of the Lord is your salvation, okay? So we're going to believe tonight. In fact, I'm believing right now for you in Jesus' name that you have a breakthrough right now and you walk into this afternoon with the joy of the Lord being your strength in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. God bless you. Have an absolutely fabulous afternoon and stay in faith. Thank you, Rod. Okay, what an awesome morning. We're going to finish with the song, so...